breaking the wall of viral drug resistance. How bioinformatics can help to improve AIDS therapies. Thomas Lengauer, Max Planck Institute for Informatics, Saarbrücken. On November 9, 1989, I was at home in Paderborn and watched everything on TV. The wall was a very present reality in my youth. It separated my grandparents from the rest of my family. Um, I'm very grateful that I can talk on this occasion at this uh, very uh, historical place. Uh, and, and I'm going to be uh, the first of a sequence of two talks on HIV. Uh, both of them try to break walls in uh, different respects. Uh, I'm more concerned with trying to make the therapies against HIV that are available today uh, as optimal as possible. And uh, the next talk is going to explore new approaches to therapy in HIV. HIV is one, uh, AIDS caused by HIV is one of the big infectious killers of humans. You see the numbers of infected, new, newly infected people in 2008 and the main problem that we have to deal with today and that maybe the next speaker is introducing you to uh, uh, steps to overcome it is that uh, today's therapy cannot eradicate the virus from the infected patient, which means once you got it, it's an alliance for life. Uh, so the therapy goal can only be to suppress the viral replication inside the patient's body and in this way to ease symptoms and prolong life. And this is also a very di difficult task, which I want to illustrate in this uh, diagram here. Uh, as the patient harbors a lot of viral particles and these viral particles are not all the same. They're quite diverse, indicated here by different colors. Drugs now suppress the viral life cycle, the viral replication, but they do so to different degrees with different viral variants. So here we have a drug which we'll call drug A, which uh, is especially good at suppressing the blue variant and the black variant, but it's not good at suppressing the green variant. So the green variant enriches and the therapy becomes quickly ineffective because this resistant green variant is now dominating. So um, a measure against that could be to administer another drug, B, that specifically targets the green variant. Now, basically, the barrier for the virus to break through into resistance is higher because the drugs cover a broader spectrum of the viral variants. But you see we have this strong minority here, which is very rare, the red variant, which eventually breaks through because it is resistant against both drugs. So, of course, the optimal picture would be to have a drug combination that somehow catches, catches all of them. This is utopia. The virus will always win in the end. The only thing we can do is to have that end be as far in the future as possible. So the major problem is now what drugs should a patient res receive who has developed resistance. This is the central problem that doctors treating AIDS patients have to deal with today. And the problem classically has been solved by a way of medical expertise, but it's now becoming quickly uh, more and more difficult to do so because we have to deal with millions of virus variants out there. This is probably an understatement. It's probably rather billions. And also the number of drugs for that very reason here becomes larger and larger. We have over two dozen drugs. And you see we get, don't give a single drug. We give several drugs. So we have hundreds or thousands of possibili uh, possibilities to administer combination drug therapies. So making this mapping, finding on the basis of the viral population the best drug combination becomes a problem which I think now is quite clearly a problem that might be solved by computer. And that's what we're doing. Our basis is a database of clinical um, information on more than a thousand HIV variants. All of these variants are characterized in two ways. Once by their genome, the genotype, um, and the other is by their level of resistance against any of the drugs in our study. Um, so uh, here we have a pictorial image here. This is uh, a thousand viral variants. Uh, the red ones are the ones that are resistant against the given drug, and the green ones are the ones that are susceptible, where the drug is effective. And you basically have now one of these colored pictures for each of the drugs in our study, which is between one and two dozen. 
Um, so this is our database, and for this database, we now want to learn with mathematical methods what would be the resistance level of a new viral variant against the drug. One of these millions of variants that are out there in the patients, but not among the thousand variants that are in our database. And of course, this is where the mathematics are, this is where the difficult methods are, and this is what I'm not going to tell you. I just want to give you a small insight of how you can learn from such data, a very, very banal uh, idea, which is just look at a single mutation, a single difference in the viral genome. Um, that difference can be carried by a virus or not. Either the virus has the mutation or it doesn't. And so the database is divided in two parts by such a given mutation. Those viruses that have the mutation here on the left and those viruses that don't. And if you now have a mutation that gives you this picture where the viruses that have the mutation tend to be resistant and the viruses that don't have the mutation tend to be not resistant, then that mutation carries information about the viral resistance. And so on the basis of these kinds of analyses, we can find out whether our viral genotype that is presented by us, to us by the patient could be resistant or not. Of course, there are many, many mutations, so we have to somehow analyze all of them in concert, and this is where our mathematics comes in. Um, and uh, the models uh, are optimized in two kinds of respects. Our quality assessment is done, of course, in terms of accuracy. We want the predictions of the model in terms of what the resistance level of the virus would be, which the model computes from the viral genotype. We want that to be as, as accurate as possible. Uh, the second quality assessment, that first one is a quite mathematical thing that you, know, you can optimize with mathematical methods. That's, that's, that's uh, common status. The second quality assessment is very important in the medical domain, and it's not quite as mathematical because it concerns interpretability. And what I mean by that is that once the model outputs the answer and says, I think this virus is resistant against that drug, that should not be the end of it. The doctor wants to hear why that is the case. The doctor wants to hear some plausibility, some argument of how the computer arrived at its decision. And that's what I mean with interpretability. All right, this is all I'm going to say about methods, and now I just want to run you through an anonymized example of a, of a, of a real case uh, that uh, has been treated on the basis of our software. We have the software available on a server that is freely accessible over the internet under the URL you see here. And what you do with the server is you input the sequence of the viral genome or the relevant parts of the viral genome into the input page. And then the server does three kinds of analyses. The first analysis is just it finds out the mutations. Where does the virus differ from the virus we would expect? Now, that is information that uh, doctors also would get without our computer. That's just something that comes out of the experimental um, assay. And in this case here, we have a patient which uh, came into the treatment, into the practice, uh, uh, several years ago, and which, under classical circumstances, would have been considered a hopeless case, because this is just a small portion of, of, his, of, of the genome of this patient, and you have 16 mutations accumulated in this gene that just codes for a single protein, and the normal classical uh, expertise basically told the physician that there is no therapy option, there's all resistance in there. Uh, and so the physician uh, turned to our, um, to our server, and our server did the second step uh, of expertise, uh, the second step of analysis, and the output of that second step is this report, where the server uh, computed the resistance level of the virus against any of uh, these 15-odd uh, drugs. Uh, so there is a row for each drug, and a column which names the drug, uh, a column which gives a number that uh, quantifies the level of resistance, the larger the number, the more resistant the virus inside the patient is to that drug. And this uh, colorful part here is the uh, interpretation part. Namely, here you uh, see mutations that the patient has acquired, that uh, the virus inside the patient has acquired, and these mutations are colored red if they increase the resistance, and they're colored green 
if they lower the resistance, such mutations exist too. Um, and so this is now what, what uh, the, the doctor got. And as a matter of fact, you see uh, that this patient uh, is quite hopeless because there are so many mutations and all these levels are very high. A level that is be above four basically says there is substantial resistance. So what was the therapy that the doctor now found? Um, as, a matter, as a matter of fact, the argument that I'm giving you now was uh, the result of an expert consultation between several doctors and labs. It was not a standard uh, argumentation to be done in normal clinical practice because this is such a difficult patient. And uh, this therapy was given. So this drug we can understand. It has one of the lowest resistance levels in the whole suite, as you can see. So we could expect this drug to be effective. But why this drug, such a high resistance level? Why would that drug be given? Well, that's actually not given in order to suppress the viral life cycle, but because this expert uh, committee found out that this drug, saquinavir, is effective because this mutation sensitizes the virus to the drug. You see the green color. And this mutation is, at the same time, a resistance mutation of this drug. So keeping this drug in the regime was specifically there to fix the mutation, to make sure that that mutation doesn't go away, so this drug stays uh, effective. Now, here we have a complicated argument that doesn't just go on resistance level, but it talks about the viral escape into resistance. What would the virus do when it's presented with this therapy? So, of course, we were interested in automating this process and making it accessible also in settings in which you don't have all the experts together that talk about it for hours in order to find out what to do. And so we have a second uh, uh, line of analysis that we prepared that actually uh, computes the escape of the virus into resistance and ranks therapies. And that's the output of that part of the server. You see here the top ranking, these are therapies ranked by their um, effectiveness, and that's the top-ranking therapy. That was exactly the therapy that the expert committee found out. It only has a success probability of 62%, but in that patient, it turned out to be successful, and it's, as far as I can tell, it was successful at least until half a year ago. I don't have new data, and that was over six years, and that was a hopeless case. So that is something that shows you that, especially in hard situations, such software can help in an essential fashion. Okay, so this is a, just a slide on uh, th that we use our software. The software is used in clinical practice. It reduces the error rate from one in four to one in seven. Um, it's treated. Uh, it's used w uh, for treating two thirds of the AIDS patients in Germany. It's called from over 30 countries. And one of the offers that I haven't described here, uh, in particular, uh, has. Uh, taken over 200,000 queries in the last three years. It's basically one, a unique offer worldwide that people use in many countries in order to treat their patients. I want to make in the last minute um, a um, uh, resolve a caveat. Uh, I talked so much about the diversity of the viral population inside the patient, and then I said you paste a single sequence into uh, that server. Now, how can you describe as a diverse population by a single genome, well, you can't. If you want to do that here in terms of colors, you would just give the average color, which would be something between green and blue, uh, and it would disregard the red, but you see the red uh, color is the one that breaks the therapy in the end. So you see that that can't possibly work. So therefore, we have a new sequencing technology which actually can resolve the whole quasi-species here, the whole population. So instead of getting a single sequence, you now get thousands of sequences. And we have adapted our server to that kind of analysis. So here you see two patient examples. Lots of sequences, thousand sequences arrayed here. The colors, top colors mean the virus is resistant. Bottom colors mean the virus is susceptible. Here, over 95% of the viruses in the population are susceptible, so you can give the drug. This is a patient that has half of the population has a resistant virus, so don't give the drug. So we, are, uh, we have, we have um, um, increased the power of our server to deal with these new data, and we're currently analyzing what exactly that means clinically, how much better our predictions become. At the end, I just want to say this is a big interdisciplinary project. Um, uh, uh, the red people are mathematicians, computer scientists, the green people are virologists, the blue people are clinicians. They all have helped uh, get us to success, us all, 
for the last 10 years. I thank them and I thank you for your attention.